didn't pretend you're asleep. Alfred? doubts about your being lazy enough to stay in bed forever. Goodness knows what time it is. You haven't got any way of telling the time since you pawned your watch like a fool. Last valuable thing we had and you knew it. It's been nothing but pawn, pawn, pawn with you. Anything to put off looking for a job. Anything to get out of going to work like a man. Alfred, get up. Do you hear me? I go out. I'm sick of this place being in a continual muss on your account. Not that we'll be here long unless you manage to get some money someplace. Heaven knows I do my part. And more. Going out to sew every day while you play the gentleman and loaf around bar rooms with that good for nothing lot of artists from the square. And where are you going to get the money, I'd like to know. The rent's due this week, and you know what the landlord is. He won't let us stay a minute over our time. You say you can't get a job. That's a lie, and you know it. You never even look for one. All you do is moon around all day, writing poetry and silly stories that no one will ever read. And no wonder they won't. You have got to get the money today somewhere. I can't do it all. I won't do it all. You've got to come to your senses. You've got to beg, borrow, or steal that money somewhere. But where, I'd like to know. You're too proud to beg. You borrow the limit, and you haven't the nerve to steal. Aren't you up yet, for heaven's sake? It'd be just like you to go back to bed or pretend to. Oh, you are up. It's about time. You needn't stare at me so. You can't fool me with your superior airs any longer. I know you too well. Better than you think, you and your goings on. I know a lot of things, my dear. Never mind what I know now. I'll tell you before I go. You needn't worry. Suppose I should get breakfast ready. Not that there's anything much to get. Unless you have some money. Foolish question. I should know you better than that by this time. When you left here in such a huff last night, I knew what would happen. You can't be trusted for a second. That fight we had was just an excuse for you to make a beast of yourself. What was the use of pawning your watch if all you wanted with the money was to waste it and buy a drink? Hurry up! It don't take long to get breakfast these days. 
All we got is bread and butter and coffee. We wouldn't even have that if it wasn't for me sewing my fingers off. Bread's stale. Hope you like it. You don't deserve any better, but I don't see why I should have to suffer. The coffee will be ready in a minute, and I'm not going to wait for you. What are you doing all this time? Well, you're almost dressed at any rate. For heaven's sake, look at you. You look awful this morning. Shave. You're disgusting. You look like a tramp. No wonder no one will hire you when you don't even look halfway decent. There's plenty of hot water to shave with right here. You've got no excuse. Look at your hand tremble. You better give up drinking. You can't handle it. It'd be just like your kind to get the DTs. Oh, that would be the last straw. I can hear the mess you're making on that floor. And the mess you made out here, cigarette butts and ashes everywhere. Why can't you use a plate? No, you wouldn't be considered enough to do that. You never think of anyone else, especially me. You don't have to sweep the room. That's all you care about. Hurry up! I'm sure it's almost time for me to go. If I'm late, I'm liable to lose my position. Then I wouldn't be able to support you any longer. Oh, and then you'd have to find a job or something dreadful like that. What I want to know is whether you're going to look for a job today or not. You know, your family won't help us anymore. They've had enough of you, too. I'm about sick of all this life. I have a good notion to go home if I wasn't too proud to let them know what a failure you've been. You, the millionaire Rollins' only son, the Harvard graduate, the poet, the catch of the town. <laughs> Wouldn't many of them envy my catch now if they knew the truth. What has our marriage been, I'd like to know? Even before your millionaire father died, owing everyone in the world money, you never wasted any time on your wife. You thought I ought to be glad you were honorable enough to marry me after getting me into trouble. You were ashamed of me, you and your fine friends, because my father's only a grocer. That's what you were. Well, at least he was honest. That's more than I can say for yours. You wanted everyone to think that you were forced to marry me and pity you, didn't you? You didn't hesitate to tell me you love me and make me believe your lies before it happened, did you? You made me believe you didn't want your father to buy me off as he tried to do. Well, I know better than that now. I haven't lived with you all this time for nothing. It's lucky the poor thing was born dead after all. What a father you but I'm not the only one who's got you to thank for being so unhappy. There's one other, at least. And she can't hope to marry you now. What about Helen? Yeah, I read the letter. Don't stare at me that way. What about it? I got a right to. I'm your wife. You needn't stare at me so. You can't bully me any longer. Only for me, you'd be gone without breakfast this morning. You never did show any consideration for what I've done. Coffee's ready, and I'm not going to wait for you. My head aches so this morning. It's a shame I have to go to work in that stuffy room all day in my condition. And I wouldn't if you were half a man. My rights ought to be lying on my back in there instead of you. You know how sick I've been this last year, and yet you object when I take a little something to keep up my spirits. You didn't even want me to take that tonic I got at the drugstore. You would be glad to have me dead and out of your way. And then you could run after all those silly little girls that think you're such a wonderful, misunderstood person. 
as Helen and the others. Oh. There. You cut yourself. It'll be a lesson to you. You know you shouldn't be drinking, running around nights with your nerves in such an awful shape. What makes you so pale? What are you doing looking at yourself in the mirror that way for? For heaven's sake, wipe that blood off your face. It's horrible. That's better. I never could stand the sight of blood. You better give up and go to a barber shop. Your hand shakes dreadfully. Why are you staring at me? Oh, are you still angry about the letter? I had a right to read it. I'm your wife. I knew all the time you were running around with someone. Your lame excuses about spending time at the library didn't fool me. Who is this Helen, anyway? One of those artists? Or does she write poetry, too? Her letter sounds that way. I bet she tells you your things are the best ever. And you believe her like a fool. Is she young and pretty? I was young and pretty, too, when you fooled me with your fine poetic talk. But life with you would soon wear anyone down. What I've been through. Breakfast is ready. Breakfast. Your coffee will be cold. What are you doing? Still shaving? You better give it up. One of these mornings, you're going to give yourself a serious cut. As soon as I'm eating, I'm going to have to run. Are you going to look for a job today or not? You'd think some of your fine friends would help you out if they really think you're so much, but I guess they just like to hear you talk. I'm sorry for this Helen, whoever she is. Don't you have any feelings for other people? What's she going to tell her family? I see she mentions them in the letter. Is she going to have the child or go to one of those doctors? That's a nice thing, I must say. Where's she going to get the money? Is she rich? Huh? You're not going to tell me anything about her, are you? Much I care. Come to think of it, I'm not sorry for your Helen after all. She knew what she was doing. She was any schoolgirl like I was from the sound of that letter. Does she know you're married? Of course she knows you're married. All your friends know about your unhappy marriage. They pity you, but they don't know my side of it. They'd talk different if they did. This Helen must be a fine one if she knew you were married. What does she expect then? That I'd actually divorce you and let her marry you? Does she think I'm crazy enough for that after all you've made me go through? I guess not. You can't divorce me, and you know it. No one can ever say I've done anything wrong. She deserves to suffer. That's all I can say. I'll tell you what I think. I think your Helen is no better than a common street walker. That's what I think. Ooh. There. You cut yourself again. Serves you right. I better be going. This is a fine life for me to be leaving. But I'm not going to stand for your loafing any longer. What did you knock all over the floor? Don't say you didn't. I can hear it dripping all over. Alfred? Alfred? What is it you knocked over? Alfred, why don't you answer me? 
Alfred? 